Next we're going to talk about the humerus. This is a right humerus and we're going to talk about the articulations with the ulna and the radius as well. Everybody say head of humerus. Head of humerus. Lesser tubercle. Lesser tubercle. Greater tubercle. Greater tubercle. Intertubercular groove. Intertubercular groove. Say neck of humerus. Neck of humerus. Shaft. Shaft. Okay. Remember that the transition areas are called the metaphyseal areas. This is called the deltoid tuberosity. Everyone say deltoid tuberosity. Deltoid tuberosity. And as the deltoid attaches here, it allows for abduction of the arm or the brachium. On the distal end, notice that there's a funny shaped part right here called the trochlea and that it matches with the trochlear notch on the ulna. And so this bone that looks like a wrench is the ulna bone, and it's one, it's the medial forearm bone. And so everybody say trochlea. Trochlea. And let's say trochlear notch. Trochlear notch. Right there. And so notice that the coronoid process of the ulna, whenever the the forearm is flexed, the coronoid process goes into the coronoid fossa on the humerus, allowing for a greater amount of flexion. So say coronoid fossa. Coronoid fossa. Okay. And then out back, the olecranon process participates with the olecranon fossa to allow for almost 180 degree extension of the forearm. So say olecranon fossa. Olecranon fossa. Also talk about, uh, say this after me, medial epicondyle. Medial epicondyle. Lateral epicondyle. Lateral epicondyle. And there are numerous muscles that go to the forearm and hand that attach up here, and or at least the palm. And so sometimes if somebody says I have tennis elbow or golfer's elbow, they're talking about inflammation of the insertions of the muscles onto the humerus.